This is Jonathan Ferguson, the keeper of firearms and artillery at the Royal Armouries Museum in the UK, which houses a collection of thousands of iconic weapons from throughout history. And this week, he's taking a look at Dead Island 2's zombie survival arsenal. We've got a nail gun here. Now, I'm not keeper of nail guns. I don't know if any real ones work this way, but the um, insert the magazine, nail carrier, and then slapping down the handle on the top. If anyone works in construction, let us know, because I'm sure you're all slapping them like, like you are <laughs> MP5s. Make sure to subscribe and let us know what other games or guns you'd like to see Jonathan break down in the comments section down below. Right, let's take a look at the guns of Dead Island 2. Pretty conventional looking, polymer framed, apparently striker fired pistol here. Looks quite a bit like the Taurus 24-7. It's its own design pretty much, but it's also quite close to the Taurus, I think. Looks it's quite believable in, in the way it's um, depicted and handled. <laughs> What's really weird though, of course, being being a Dead Island game, is that we we now have some bizarre attachments. So it's like an electrifying muzzle device thing to, to deliver. This is this is a role playing game, isn't it? Basically, so um, we have electrified bullets because, of course, bullets and electricity is worse than just bullets, isn't it? So kind of like taser taser rounds that are somehow delivering electrical energy wirelessly. Let's not overthink that aspect too much. The aspect I am going to overthink, though, is the complete lack of any hole in the muzzle device. So if you were to attach this to your whatever pistol and pull the trigger, it would go boom because there is nowhere for the pressure to go. That's a, a bit of an oversight, um, one that I would imagine is fairly easy to fix and they might. <laughs> Please don't bombard them with <laughs> comments and, and uh, complaints. But when you have the ability to, when you have something rendered in a decent amount of detail and it's, it, you know, you can rotate it and look down the, the barrel. We're used to seeing rifling down the barrel, the projectile itself, all that lovely detail. So when all you see is a flat bit of, texture, you think, hmm. This rifle, although it looks quite Accuracy International, is fairly closely based on the Russian SV-98 bolt action rifle, which is quite reminiscent of the AI, actually, but with more of a sort of sculpted, organic look to the chassis, to the stock. The, the sort of divergent slope of the, of the bottom of the receiver, slash stock, um, using three words for the same thing now, and the magazine is kind of a giveaway, and the very oval-shaped trigger guard, curved pistol, Grip. It's it's an SV98 or or close to it. Clearly a type of pre precision rifle that should have a scope on it. I don't know if you can get one in the game or, or something, but I'm not seeing one here. I see the green muzzle device, which has some sort of little tank thing under it as well. On the, on the muzzle of the gun, uh, the rifle is acid. Should have realised video games and, and green equals acid usually and there's a flame version as well that we also saw there different ways of causing aggravated damage i suppose the the role players would call it fine re i guess but um, it's not my style of, of zombie gaming gameplay i'd rather have the traditional remove the head or destroy the brain thing than just doing more damage to their bodies if they're supposed to be dead anyway it doesn't sort of intuitively make much sense that you would be looking to do more types of damage to them but i'll that's just old man shouts at sky so <laughs> <laughs> now, no surprise to anyone that we have uh, an AR, an armor like rifle in this game, possibly more than one. This is clearly in sort of DMR configuration, and I recognize that upper receiver, very reminiscent of one that appeared in. Uh, Modern Warfare 2, Modern Warfare 2, 2 that we covered previously, and that is a slightly obscure upper and lower receiver set from a company, forgive me for calling you obscure Mega Arms, but um, <laughs> I wasn't aware of you before, I am now, a company called Mega Arms who um, Activision clearly based their design on. Um, now the lower in this case is not that, in fact it's, it's possibly something else with that recessed square above the magazine, uh, well on the magazine housing. That's sort of ringing a bell as well but I can't think what that would be but the upper is a take on that that design. Albeit the angled cuts on the sort of tubular section of the, or what's normally a tubular section of the AR upper, they're vertical on the 
on the real one, I think. Uh, yeah, a few other details that don't quite line up with that, but it it's eerily similar. Yeah, let's see this thing in action. Okay, straying away from the gun slightly, I just want to briefly comment on the damage modeling, as it were. So we have riot gear zombies, and we're not using the Z word in this game, it seems. I thought we did first time around, but I could be wrong. <laughs> the rifle caliber bullets are striking this riot helmet and not going through right away, which they absolutely would. Um, even a true ballistic helmet does not typically resist. Um, I mean, even if this, if this is even if this is only 5.56, only 5.56, um, it should be going straight through both sides and the head and out the other side. Certainly for a, uh, a riot helmet, which is just to protect your head from impact damage. It's not not ballistic. Certainly not normally anyway. Hey, it doesn't look like we have a suite of ARs in this in terms of the DMR and the um, assault rifle. They are different. They've got different receiver architecture, as it were, and the handguard arrangements are different. It does have the US military M4 as opposed to M4A1 burst function rather than automatic. In fact, the receiver has got the word burst written on it. That appeared, we, we seem to be having some mirroring here, some graphical mirroring to some extent because the fire selector text is backwards on the right-hand side of the lower. Yeah, not too much to say about this thing other than it, it's a civilian build AR in, in sort of in context and in detail, but with a burst trigger mechanism in it which is a little bit of a contradiction i guess it's it's a gameplay thing so you're, you're not able to just hose this thing burst the burst rate is a bit low for um, m4 slash uh, m16 a2 this thing does suffer from extraneous straps and strips there's uh, like black tape wrapped around part of the buttstock that would do nothing as far as i can tell except that i can't see how you would extend it so maybe that catch broke and that's holding something in place. Doesn't really make sense there. That's a minor thing. And then there are what look like elastic bands or well, bungee cord, I think, in several places on the handguard that in theory might be holding down a pressure switch for a light or something, but they don't know like they're doing anything here. Right, a somewhat disguised Ingram Model 10, aka Mac 10. We have one here. This one always amuses me. I don't know if you can see on camera, but this one was made in Tunbridge Wells in Blighty, jolly old England. <laughs> it's just probably only of amusement to me and maybe a couple of other Brits in the audience. But this is this was made by a company called SF Firearms. It has a an unusual shaped grip. The Ingram is normally tubular or like box section steel with then a back strap in, in polymer on the rear of it. This is more Uzi-like in that it has, well, you still have the box section underneath, but there's a wraparound polymer grip with ribs on it. And it gives it a bit more of a Dead Island 2 look, but it's not not the same. The, the, game in, uh, the gun in the game is substantially more different, notably in having an angled grip, more like a traditional pistol grip and the magazine respects that angle so the magazine is sitting at a rate angle that's quite rare in machine pistols and small uh, some machine guns because 90 degrees is the best <laughs> angle for reliable uh, presentation of the round to feed reliably however modern pistol caliber firearms often do because they're usually designed around something like a glock magazine which is designed for an angled pistol grip and therefore comes in at an angle a very roundabout way of saying that it doesn't match the traditional style of ingram or uzi or, or, or whatever but it wouldn't be by any means impossible in fact i think i've seen um custom lowers for m10s and m11s that do have an angled magazine so something like this could exist, it's just that it doesn't, not looking exactly like this. But the upper parts, this distinctive, the two two ribs on this side, the ejection port on this side, and the angle of the lower receiver, the, the very boxy design of the Ingram is all there. Even the, if I remove the stock on this one, makes it look more like the one in the game, which has a swivel on the back of it. 
you can see that the rear sight even has the uh, these two perforations as well as the sight aperture giving you the three holes in the triangular bit of metal just like the gun in the game so there's no doubt that that gun is based on the ingram m10 All right, this is a um, Smith & Wesson Performance Center something or other. <laughs> Not a model we have in the collection. We have we have many Smith & Wesson revolver designs, uh, variants in the collection. But um, as in many cases, we are lacking some of the more modern material so not this one but i do recognize the the form of the barrel and some fairly telltale smith and wesson cues in the design as well quirky feature of this thing is the metallic sound i'm hearing and i'm only really hearing it when we're aiming with the sights here there's a sound almost like a bullet hitting a steel plate and i think it's meant to be the the, the gun operating somehow and we're, we're for some reason the difference between holding it at arm's length and holding it i guess closer to your face is that loud clanging sound which is really odd the acid tank on the front still makes no sense makes my brain hurt the actual behavior of the gun is pretty good i think that i like the the recoil depiction you get a sense of how unsteady your bones and tissue is <laughs> are when you fire a magnum class revolver it will tend to not only pull up and left but also kind of wobble as well so it's quite naturalistic in that in that depiction but the reload's okay um if anyone has a revolver please don't flick the cylinder shut on it um, i have it on good authority from gunsmith that that does in fact damage your gun perhaps worth doing in a in a zombie apocalypse but um, otherwise don't So I've just been presented with a range of different shotguns that are all the same shotgun. And I believe, well, to be fair, it's a mashup. Receiver shape is probably Remington 870, which is what this riot gun, I guess you'd call it, or, or entry, entry gun. But the distinctive shape of the 870 trigger guard is not there. The bolt is flat face, more like a Mossberg. So I think it's a sort of fantasy shotgun. In any case, in terms of short pump actions, this is probably the coolest that we have. Um, and it's it's more, if anything, Duke Nukem 3D. So that's the that's our little short 870. The game kind of goes a bit nuts. So we end up with more of a, a proper tactical shotgun configuration, long barrel, fixed stock. There was um, the M4 stock adapter, which is the plague of the firearms world, as far as I'm concerned. And then on that variant, there was a, a really curious uh, Spaz 12 front end. It looked like, a, I think, what, what they call in the car world, a cut and, cut and shut, where the front half was Spaz 12. Still pump mode, not the semi mode. And then the back half was still 870 slash Mossberg 500, uh, which made it look quite weird. And I'll say video gamey, but um, video games are, are normally more spot on for realism than, than that but this is not by no means a realistic game so i'm not i'm not holding it to those standards but if you show me this stuff i'll tell you about it we've got a nail gun here now i'm not keeper of nail guns uh, and I know very little about them. We do stray into non-strictly firearm areas in, in some areas, like humane killers, that kind of thing, signal pistols, but we don't deal with powered tools, which uh, cartridge nail guns are. Now, this is some sort of electric system that I believe exists, but I know nothing about, so I can't really comment on the realism of that, except that, much like the uh, Denzel Washington Equalizer movie, which is fantastic, but nail guns don't aren't that powerful at that distance. This one has also had some weird pistol sights. No more nails onto the, onto the top for some reason. I, I don't know why they bothered with that. Uh, and the damage dealt by these nails is basically identical to at least some of the bullets in the game. So the the sort of balance of this being an expedient weapon is a, seems a bit off to me. But then I don't really know how it fits within the, the ecology, <laughs> the ecosystem of the game. But it seems a bit too powerful. That I quite like the, I don't know if any real ones work this way, but the um, insert the magazine nail carrier and then slapping down the handle on the top uh, does make it feel quite like a gun. I imagine if that is something on nail guns, if anyone works in construction, let us know, because I'm sure you're 
you're all slapping them like like you are <laughs> B5s. Those were the guns of Dead Island 2. As always, check out our, if you can, our three museums here in the UK. And if you can't, we've got various things online here at the Royal Armouries, uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and head over to our own YouTube channel if you'd like for a bit more of a deeper dive on historic firearms. <laughs>